What's up guys, Dr. Mo here, Digital Nomad Physician at digitalnomadphysician.com. Back in LA, obviously, traffic, right? Uh, so, just to catch you guys up, basically we moved back to Los Angeles just temporarily. We bought a Long Beach apartment and we bought, we bought it sight unseen, so that was kind of exciting for both of us. My girlfriend wasn't really excited about, you know, maybe investing in it or maybe in that initial kind of selection process, she was a little hesitant because I think it's understandable, you know, she hasn't bought any uh, real estate yet in her life and I've bought and sold several. I have a bit of experience and I think to me, it's less of an emotional connection. The purchase wasn't supposed to be something where I'm gonna live and stay forever. It's all, when I purchase uh, real estate, it's always in, I always have this concept in mind like, oh, it's gonna make a good investment, I can always sell it, uh, I can always rent it out, uh, something along those lines. And so, now that we're back, we're staying at her mom's house for a little bit, we did a cat sitting gig on trustedhousesitters.com, so we got to stay for free, that was great. And we're driving a lot back and forth every day, uh, probably hour, hour and a half each way, just driving, just to go to the apartment, check on it, make sure things are going well. And that's kind of exciting. I think you learn a lot of things about managing people, subcontractors from painters to flooring guys to window guys, tile setters, electrician, plumbers. Uh, so I think there's excitement there. Also, you have to buy stuff, right? You have to go and get furniture. We're, we're trying to get everything used. Uh, and so far we've been doing well. The only thing we said, okay, maybe the mattress, because the prices were not that different. I can get a new mattress for 300 or I can get a used one for 150. That's what, what the used ones were going for. So in that sense, I think it makes sense to get something new. But I usually get a Berkey water filter, which is 400 some dollars. I just found somebody who's gonna sell it to me. Actually, this one was gonna be 500. She's selling it to me for 300 so that's great um, and some other stuff that I think we're gonna try to buy used um, especially with offer up Facebook uh, what is that I don't, I don't have Facebook but my girlfriend does so Facebook there's there's places where you can buy and sell stuff a Facebook marketplace I think so we're using that um, now that I'm back here in Los Angeles it's been sort of interesting to experience all of the things that come with living here right you got traffic there is the social thing, and some of the things that I've noticed, every time I co I'm come back to LA, I'm always cognizant of that, I'm always aware of it. Some of the things that I enjoy is the diversity of people, cultures, the different types of foods and stuff that you can get. The thing I noticed this time around is everything is a lot more expensive. For me to go eat out somewhere where the food is healthy, what I consider healthy, of course, is very different than what somebody else considers healthy, it probably is gonna cost me about $30 a meal for me alone. And so that's insane. Parking is quite expensive. Driving gas, $5 a gallon compared to other countries, of course, it's cheap, but for the US, that's a lot. <clears throat> and, and I think also just contractors, construction workers, that's certainly gone up quite a lot in price. Wood, uh, vinyl flooring, just a little bit. We got maybe 50, you know, 60 square feet of vinyl flooring cost us nearly $100. And that doesn't count for the gas and, you know, driving back and forth. Delivering items is much more expensive than uh, I remember back in the day. So everything has gone up quite a bit. Um, as far as people and friends, I think that's kind of similar. People are still a little bit hesitant to commute a lot and drive a lot to get to, to certain destinations. I still like relying on public transport and Uber, uh, so ride sharing apps, and I've done that uh, for some of the, I, I've been going to the urgent care and working and I've been using the ride sharing apps and that's been great. And for the rest of the time, I've even tried going all the way from the valley, which is kind of Tarzana, like south of the val South Valley, uh, down to West LA or even Long Beach. It took me about two and a half hours on public transportation, and it's not pleasant, but as a guy my age, it's comfortable. I don't feel unsafe per se. Uh, so that brings me back to working. So uh, when I first started my website, it was urgentcarecareer.com, and the reason was I always found urgent care which is kind of like this, it's not really a branch of medicine, right? But it is sort of this niche in medicine where people work. Uh, pediatricians, family medicine doctors, and uh, internal medicine doctors. The reason I loved it so much was because I could deliver fast care. I always had a lot of variety in patients. The patients usually were very happy. 
institutions like Kaiser was very happy to have me work in the urgent care because it was fast paced and nobody wanted to work there, high acuity. And so it was like a people pleaser all around. So I really enjoyed it. And for that reason, I had my website initially called urgentcarecareer.com. And then later I changed it to digitalnomadphysician.com because within urgent care, you have this opportunity to deliver care really in any kind of setting. You can work in the primary care setting, you can work in the ER, you can work in a fast track, and of course you can work uh, virtually, remotely. And that, that it, it, this phase of my life, I really enjoy it. I know that a time will come when I'm no longer gonna enjoy being remote. I'm gonna want that, I don't know if it's stability, but I think maybe predictability and having a little bit more autonomy over the kind of patients I see, the kind of things I see. This Long Beach city that we're staying in, what's, it, what's been really interesting is there isn't a lot of urgent care, but there's a lot of pediatric urgent care. And pediatric urgent care is kind of like a, is, is, is a unique space because most pediatric patients you see are super healthy. There's nothing wrong with them. It's the parents that are always worried. So for the most time, for the most part, if you just say you're good, you're fine, leave it alone, kids are going to be okay. But unfortunately, much like the elderly, there is always that chance of the kids going south really fast and the only symptoms they'll have are very subtle. And if you miss those, you're kind of screwed. That specific rash, the fever, the tachypnea, those are the things that are going to get you in trouble. <clears throat> and I'm sure at some point you work in an urgent care long enough, you're probably going to get into some sort of trouble missing a urinary tract infection, missing an acute respiratory failure in a pediatric patient, missing the foreign body um, ingest, uh, inhalation, foreign body swallowing, foreign body in the lungs. And that happens, you know, it's, it's going to happen to us. Um, but I still like the urgent care because it, it is you do it and then you walk away like you the patients are happy you know um, so I did my first shift now I was working with a medical group here when a couple years ago a year ago when we were in LA I was walking around the neighborhood in in the neighborhood that I was staying in which was Glassville Park Los Angeles and I saw an urgent care local urgent care literally I stand in front of him I sent him an email say hey uh, I'm I'm a physician, I'm family medicine, I'm trained in urgent care, and if you have any availabilities, I'd love to work. They immediately called me back the same day, and they said, yeah, we'd be interested. And so that's where I had started working. You guys can see some other videos and podcast episodes that I did. Uh, and it was good, it was, it was really fun. I think maybe I overdid it in some shifts, especially the 12 hour shifts. I maybe did a few back to back, and so that was a little exhausting, but for the most part, it was good. And then I went away for a year traveling. I was back in Spain and some other places. And I told him, I am going to be gone, but I'd love to come back. And now that I came back, I, played, I applied to a few places. So I applied back to this urgent care, Concentra Urgent Care, which does a lot of occupational medicine and DMV physicals and drug screenings. And uh, a, a locum tenants company, which is called Tracy Zweig with a Z. Uh, dot com and she's great well she I think she's now retired and gave it over to uh, somebody else but it's a great company they I've, I've worked with them before when I was in residency and they still place you in good in good places in very good places I think they do a good job of that the pay is not very high so for a half day you might make 550 bucks with them for a full day of clinic let's say nine to five you're probably gonna make about eight hundred about nine hundred dollars and maybe a 12-hour shift you might make closer to eleven hundred dollars so it's not very high for Los Angeles but that is kind of what we're experiencing we're experiencing a lot of decreased uh, uh, return on uh, remuneration for our hourly wage as phys as urgent care physicians so somehow for some reason a drop maybe has to do with medicare maybe other stuff so i still like urgent care i still think it is a better opportunity than maybe some other things out there now i'm also going to be covering clinics so i'm going to do locums uh, i'm going to do per diem not really locums i'm going to do some per diem shifts kind of like moonlighting in some family medicine clinics. I'm not too nervous about that. The only thing is like, what are some new algorithms that may have changed? Like JNC8, you know, what is the next blood pressure medicine to, to do? You know, should you 
you not use this medicine because of that. With diabetes, that's a little bit complicated because you got some of these other new injectables and things like that. And you know, which one should you use first? I'm worried about the pre-authorization. I know that's blown up and that's kind of a headache that I don't want to have to deal with. So some of that is on my radar, but I don't think it's difficult to look that up. When I did my first shift at the urgent care, it was 12 hours and I just took an Uber. And I decided to just make it easy on myself. One hour, 50 bucks. I went there, you know, tipped them. And when I came back, I, uh, I got an urge, I got a uh, Uber, and it was really nice, honestly. To sit there, be on my phone, or listen to uh, an audiobook, just makes it nice, makes it fun. The only things I did to prepare, especially when you have like a year where you're not doing any of that, is I went on Up to Date, and I actually looked up on all their updates. Up to Date has a really good section where you look at all the updates. I have an update, Up to Date subscription, and I looked at what was new in my field in family medicine, in urgent care, and in internal medicine. Not, not a lot. There wasn't a lot, but COVID had a lot. So I kind of read up on Paxlovid and the monoclonal antibodies and some of the vaccination recommendation, influenza, etc. And as I was seeing patients, I try to always go back, like what's the new recommendation for strep, for community acquired pneumonia, for a urinary tract infection, for example. Um, the urinary tract infection algorithm that I used to follow for a man with a UTI was a complicated UTI, but now it's considered a non-complicated UTI, so you can treat it the same way as you would treat a urinary tract infection in a woman, unless they're over the age of 65, or there's fevers, etc., systemic symptoms. Um, so that was good. That was, that was kind of like a cool update for me to learn. As far as like how much work I'm going to do, I, I think I'll, I'll base it on how much money I need. And that's kind of will determine how much more money I have to spend on this apartment. We bought it for about 315,000 out the door, give or take. I have a $200,000 mortgage on it, so I have about $200 a month that I gotta pay for it. Uh, $2,000 a month that I gotta pay for it. So far, the renovations and everything have been far lower than I expected because I anticipated I would do all the work myself, which was gonna be super cheap. I probably would have had no more than like $3,000 in parts to do renovations, to do remodel or something like that, and decoration and stuff. Of course, you're gonna buy furniture and things like that, but uh, even with all of this, the people doing the work, it's incredible. Uh, not, not, not to say that they didn't, they're not making really good money. I think they're making it really good money for the, the painters, the hardwood floor guys, but still quite good anyway my girlfriend is driving so i get to i get to record this video that's it that's all i had to say guys for anybody who's still interested in uh some coaching with me i have my uh hourly rate at 150 now i'll keep it until the end of the year if you're interested go to urgent care career uh, digital nomad physician.com top right click on coaching and if you have any questions email me drmo at digital nomad physician.com take care